Welcome back to Life As Usual. Today we are going to be talking about the most important tool that you must buy. This tool you must buy even if you do not want to work on your vehicle. Would you like to turn on your reversing light just like this? And turn it back off just like this. Would you like a digital speedometer here? Would you like to add a two inch lift to your car without using any tools? Would you like to fix your height sensor? Would you like to turn on your adaptive cruise control? Would you like to turn off your adaptive cruise control? Would you like to turn on your adaptive cruise control with QSS? Or would you like to have your adaptive cruise control without QSS? Would you like to hear a beep when you lock your car like this? Would you like to fold your mirror when you lock your car? Would you like to unfold your mirror when you unlock your car and hear the beep? Would you like to unlock all of your doors at once using your fob? Or would you like to unlock each door individually with your fob? Would you like to deflate the full air suspension system on your vehicle at once to put it all the way down to the floor? Or would you like to raise it to maximum? Would you like to have an EGR delete instantly without touching the engine or take it to a mechanic? Has it ever happened to you that you are out and about on a trip and all of a sudden you get an error warning and you panic, you're not sure what to do? Has your car ever got into limp mode and not sure what to do in the middle of nowhere and you really need help. Your vehicle has multiple ECUs and modules. These modules are like these ones. This is a module. 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 These modules are placed there to send signal to what the car is up to and what it currently is doing and it's a kind of protection for your vehicle. Those modules are controlled by ECU. ECU, what is ECU Alex? Electronic control unit. ECU is an electronic control unit. However, you cannot control them or tell them what to do unless you do one thing, which is what I'm about to tell you. So these sensors act as a protection. So it detects your engine is about to be faulty, your wheel is about to be faulty, any part of your car is about to get faulty. So to prevent it from damaging or hurting yourself, it will shut down, it will shut down your vehicle. So your vehicle could go into a limp mode. All of the sensors in your car, such as height sensor or fuel sensor or whichever sensor it is, they work based on voltage. The higher the voltage, that means it's on maximum. The lower the voltage, it means it's lower. What it means, for example, the height sensor looks like a scissor, okay? When it's on maximum, that's high voltage. When it's lower, on it's minimum voltage. So that gives a signal to your ECU to tell it on which height it is. Maximum voltage is high, low voltage is low. For this reason, your battery condition needs to be tip-top condition. That's why the first thing I would recommend doing is to replace your battery. The battery needs to be in the perfect condition. Even if you think it's working, no, get a brand new battery. And when you get a brand new battery, you need to reset the battery to show that it's a new battery. All of these sensors need to communicate together and they understand each one of them how much voltage is receiving. If one sensor is receiving higher voltage than the other, it will get jealous and it will show you an error. When it shows you an error, that means something is wrong but not necessarily that the sensor is wrong, it could be that the voltage is wrong. That is a simple fix by replacing your battery. Some people, what they do is reset the battery, but resetting is a temporary solution. Ultimately, you have to replace your battery, especially if you do not use your car as often. That means if you use it once or twice a week, you definitely need to replace your battery. And the battery must be replaced at least uh, I would say once every three to five years, okay? Don't leave it for five years. These batteries these days will last you for three years. So I would recommend once every three years to replace your battery. Your car is made up multiple modules and computers that can be controlled through the OBD2, which you need to control the vehicle. Now, originally these computers are controlled and programmed by the factory. However, with time, these ones, they need to be reprogrammed or controlled and manage. The way to control your vehicle is through the OBD. OBD is an onboard diagnostic and just like the mouse and the keyboard on your PC, you need an OBD tool to access the computer and control your car. The OBD tool can also track and see live data of what your engine or what your car is up to. You can see live data of what your exhaust is doing, what your turbos are doing, your manifold is doing, your injectors are doing. So an OBD2 is the first thing you must buy when you buy a vehicle. Preferably, it's actually before you purchase your vehicle so you can see if the vehicle is suitable for you or not because it will show you in history if you had previously a fault 
without uh, co errors or anything like that, you know, fault code. Now, a fault code is important because you take that fault code, you search it, and it will tell you exactly what the problem with your car. So you don't have to go onto a forum and say, hey, my car is not working, what do I do? Well, first you need the fault code. Fault code will tell you exactly what you need to do to your vehicle to fix it. This is a device that you must buy even if you don't want to work on your vehicle. This will save you on a numerous times as well as it will upgrade your car just by using an OBD2. Today I'm using the GAP Diagnose IID Tool BT. We do not get paid for our about to say. However, credit when credit is due, this is the best thing that we have ever purchased. So now that we understand what an OBD2 is, in another word, if you've missed everything I said, an OBD2 is your mouse and the keyboard to your computer. Your computer is inside your car, your car is controlled by a computer. This is one big computer machine, okay? You cannot control this computer unless you have this device. This tool is specifically made for this vehicle, okay? So you need to be careful. This is a Land Rover one, okay? It says Land Rover Range Rover, okay? This tool is specifically made for this vehicle and not for anything else. And this is not the expensive tool. This is not the pro one. You can get a pro one. However, this one is so specific that it's a VIN lock. That means it's specifically for this vehicle, okay? I cannot use it on a different L322. I can only use it on this specific VIN number, okay? So, let me show you where you need to plug it in. Come with me. So, if you go into your vehicle, underneath the footwell here, there is a cover. Can you see the cover? And then you have access and you plug your OBD2 like this. You plug it in like so, up. So after plugging the OBD2 into the vehicle, now you have the mouse and the keyboard for the computer of the vehicle. Now, let me show you what we can do with this device. We can access the OBD tool through an app on your phone, okay? Which what makes it really, really good. If you're stranded somewhere unknown, this will help you because you only need your phone and your app without using internet to enter into the, the computer of your vehicle and you can just go ahead and fix the problem yourself. So I'm going to record my screen and record myself to show you what we can do with this vehicle. First, we're going to go inside the app and you can see uh, connect to last tool. We have entered the main menu, okay? But you can see here that it says ignition is off. You see that it says ignition is off. So what we're going to do is we turn on the ignition, not the car, the ignition. Okay, it says ignition on. It will show you the voltage, which is 12 volt. And what we need to do next is we're gonna go through a few things. Click on fault and it will show you what faults your vehicle ha currently has, okay? I'm just gonna run through the quick steps that we can do uh, using this app, okay? So if you have a fault, you can simply reset the fault or reset the code, okay? You can also adjust the height from here you can calibrate multiple things. You can calibrate your brakes, your cruise control, your headlight, your parking brake, your suspensions, your ceiling wheel, angle, actually your active dampening, transfer case, all of that can be calibrated again. So if I go to service and test, you can service and test all of the following, which is of course your auxiliary heater, your brake modules, multiple things. I'm not gonna go through it, but even your suspensions, you can do that. You can reset the full vehicle, which you have seen me in the previous videos, resetting the full vehicle. So I will go back to line value. We'll go back to it in a bit. So when we go to a service and test, if we go to body control, you can add a key. You can replace the battery for the vehicle so battery replacement once you replace it you have to click to come here and reset the battery so if you have lost your fob and you want a new fob you can simply add a new key here you can check how many keys you have you can learn the glass for the the driver or passenger uh, you can go into the valet mode you can reset the service interval with regard to suspension you can test the, va the valve you can set tight tolerance you can set the normal tolerance you can deflate corners which is great if you want to service your airbags or replace an airbag, you can deflate the corners, you can deflate the reservoir, which is again, you can empty your tank, which is perfect. You can deflate all, which is a great thing. You can do so many things. You can transmission, you can clear the adoption value for the transmission. You can view your faults, you can calibrate your car, you can service your car, you can test your car, you can test all the modules and you can configure your car. So if you go to car configuration and then click continue over here, I have done a few things. I put a, a uh, 
uh, some of my favorite things over here and I will show you. So I have the arm or disarm chirp, which what we heard previously. The DLR, I put it as active. Follow me home, I enabled it. The reverse light. Second press chirp, I enabled it. The digital speed, I put it as a display for the digital speed. So that's a great thing. So from this configuration menu, we can th go through it and we can do a lot of things. For example, we can turn on and off the 4x4 screen. We can uh, turn on and off the parking cameras. We can control the Bluetooth. We can control the cellular telephone. We can control the multimedia. We can control the radio. We can control the television. We can control the traffic message channel receiver. Let's see what else we can control. We can control the DVD player. We can control the battery, okay? And tell it exactly which battery we have. We can control the first press super lock, okay? We can control the running board three flash turn signal. We can turn it on and off. We can control the adaptive front light system. We can control the, the sherp like we discussed. We can control the auto lock, the corning lamp. So when you turn left and right, the lamp will turn on. We can control the uh, cruise control display system. We can control multiple things as you can see here. Now let's go to life value. So if I turn the car on and then we go to life values, okay? And then we go to select life values and I can go onto the, uh, for example, I can go to the quick list and I can see multiple things. So for example, if I go to, let's pretend we wanna go on the body control here. Uh, I want to see, actually I can search multiple things. So let's go into the engine and let's, uh, that's the speed, let's view. You can see here the RPM speed engine, okay? So if I press on the accelerator, you can see that it goes up, it goes down. And that is helpful for you to see how your car is doing. Uh, you can view the EGR and see how it's doing. So that's the EGR bank one, and that's the EGR valve position on the bank two. When I press, you can see that it's opening and closing, the boost pressure. Now, if you want to delete the EGR, you would have to download a different software from a different company and they will basically download a program into your VIN number and you can connect this app to your OBD2 and then you can delete the EGR without physically doing anything because you can control it here. You can see the opening position is opening and closed. So you can see they're opening and closing. No issue with my EGR. Again, this is the command. You can see here zero and it's giving it a higher command. So you can see uh, different things. Also, you can view uh, fuel rail pressure, for example, the uh, main voltage supply, throttle position. I can view it all over here. Y you see, that's the fuel pressure, the voltage, the throttle position is 5%. The EC flash is when you get a new software. As I said, this is where you get the uh, EGR, this is where you do the EGR delete. There are multiple things that you can do within this app. But this app, it will be your mouse and the keyboard for your car or your computer. So this is very important. And I just wanted to share that with you, even though this is not sponsored, I'm not getting paid to say that. This company doesn't know that I exist even, but I really wanted to show you this because it's very important for you. And it's important for what we are about to do in the next videos, which we'll talk about uh, later. But I hope this video was helpful for you, or if it wasn't, it was at least entertaining. And with that in mind, uh, we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.